Hi, my name is Dan Burns. I'm the Physics Curriculum and Training Specialist at Pasco Scientific. There's my email, so if you have any questions or comments or I can help you in any way uh, in your uh, job as a physics teacher, let me know. Uh, so I'm uh, presenting modeling and measuring characteristics of a large amplitude pendulum. There's my abstract. Here's my agenda. Uh, what we're really going to do is look at an experimental setup where we collect angle and angular velocity data for a, and period data for a large amplitude physical pendulum and then compare it to a simulation that will code using the same software. And my resources uh, and these slides are at this URL. So if you have that, you can go to that, get these slides, get all the other things I'm going to talk about. So I have a table clamp with a long rod and a rotary motion sensor connected to that. And then on the rotary motion sensor is a clamp that allows me to clamp this meter stick. And I'm using the new aluminum meter stick we have here at PASCO. And these are part of the system we call the meter stick uh, torque set. A lot of other things you can do with that. And then down here at the bottom, I have another table clamp and a rod and a smart gate, just a photo gate to measure the period. You can also just have it sitting on a box or lower things to the floor, however you want to do it. But this setup lets me easily uh, have a pendulum with an amplitude of up to 180 degrees. Uh, it's pretty safe. It's not a big heavy thing that could hit somebody. And it would, uh, resulted in a lot of interesting uh, things. So let's take a look. So I wanted to model the motion of the pendulum, and that can be difficult. Large amplitude pendulum is a difficult system uh, to come up with equations for its um, motion as a function of time and its period, but we can uh, do that numerically pretty easily. So the if we disturb the meter stick from uh, its vertical position, there's a restoring torque based on the angle and uh, from gravity. And also there's a torque from drag. The thing gets moving pretty quick, so drag is not something you can ignore with these large amplitudes uh, for this particular one. Anyway, it's going fast. And so I have in my algorithm a drag model based on the angular speed squared and then the net torque from the angle and the, angle, the uh, drag. And so if I know the net torque, I can find the change in angular momentum for a small delta t, and then find the new angular velocity, or the change in angular velocity, and then the new angular velocity, and the new angle, increment delta t, and repeat. So this is what it looks like with the equations. We have the rotational inertia for a thin rod. X, in this case, is a half meter. You could clamp it at other positions as well. And then this was my simple drag model. And I'm assuming the drag is concentrated here at the center, which made it simple, and it actually worked pretty well. If you have other ideas I should consider, please let me know. And so there's my net torque, and these equations just flush out what we're saying here. If you want to try this yourself, you can get uh, Pasco Capstone from our website. Uh, we have a free 180-day trial for it. SparkView Spark also could be used, and it has a, a free 180-day trial for desktops and laptops, but it's free for tablets and phones. And here's the Blockly code. I took the comments out so it could uh, fit on the slide easier, uh, but the comments are in the file that you can download. You, know, you can follow it pretty well without comments anyway. I have my uh, characteristics of the meter stick, and initial settings. I'm using uh, initial amplitude of pi over 2 here. And then here's my loop where I calculate drag and the net torque and then go through that algorithm that we were uh, following there. Here's the output from the code. Um, and here's the output from the actual system. So you can t compare points and here early on at uh, 1.89 seconds, the angle is pretty close. And then a whole minute later, the amplitude has decayed a lot. Uh, at about the same time, we have almost the same angle. Angular velocity, that's going to be a little 
uh, trickier to match, but it still works pretty well just by inspection. These look the same. And at a couple of points, it's starting to deviate somewhat. Uh, you could tweak the drag a little bit to uh, get a little closer. Um, I, it turns out I didn't have to tweak it that much. It worked pretty well just, just at the start. If uh, you set the amplitude larger, in this case 2.4, I think it was 2.44 radians to start with, you look at the graph and you say, hey, that, that doesn't quite look like a sign. It's too roundy. And that's true for the code and for the actual output. It's not following this uh, sinusoid curve fit. And then the angular velocity, you look at it and you say, that's definitely not a sinusoid. Uh, almost looks like a sawtooth. And that's true for the code and the sensor data. So that's kind of cool. You can really see that uh, it's not simple harmonic motion just in the shape of the graph, unlike a small amplitude approximation. Uh, you can even set this larger to a uh, pi radians, and it this shape even gets more accentuated. Then we also wanted to look at the period of the pendulum and how it varies with amplitude. So the small uh, amplitude equation, there's no dependence on amplitude. But there's a, a solution to the differential equation and a numerical approximation of that that does have amplitude in it. So I included uh, out to this term, probably not a big factor there, but it was easy to put in. And then I found this other approximation much simpler in a physics teacher uh, journal article that I referenced later. So how am I getting the real period? Well, what I'm doing is measuring the angular speed. And when that is zero, I capture what the period is, the last measured period anyway, and what the angle is there. And then I'll graph those two together. Uh, this works because of the high data rates. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I move the photo gate out of the way so I don't trigger it at the beginning because I want to start collecting data when the meter sticks vertical so zero is at the bottom. Then I release it. And you can see the periods start to appear as well as the theoretical ones on the graph. So this is the measured period up here and then the two different uh, approximations. And they're really not that far apart to start with. Um, this time scale is pretty small. We'll see that in a little bit. But then they totally converge uh, as the amplitude gets smaller. Here's the uh, graph we we're just looking at. And I'm comparing, again, the measured to the red here, which is the simpler equation, and the blue, the little bit more complicated. They're pretty close to each other as well. And there's some deviation here because there's rotational inertia in the, from the clamp and the rotary sensor. And so if instead I measure, I use the period uh, for the small amplitude period, what's measured when it is a very small amplitude, I get rid of that. But somehow that seemed like cheating, so I, I showed both here. Uh, but it matches really well, and trying to explain this difference is interesting. Um, whenever you capture a period, it's been measured over a swing back and forth like that, and so the amplitude was decreasing during that time. And so that one period measurements is sort of averaging in parts of a cycle that had a larger amplitude and a larger period. And also there's a little bit of a, a time delay on just measuring it, but I think that's why that time delay results in this. I'd be interested in hearing what your ideas are on that as well, uh, but that's one of the more interesting things uh, that came out of this. I mentioned resources. There's a lab about physical pendulums uh, using a similar setup where students uh, pretty much develop the parallel access theorem with their data. There's a whole Blockly code with comments for the simulation. And then there's uh, some calculations in the capstone files, two different files there, one for the, the motion simulation, one for the period capture. And then I also found an old PASCO lab on large amplitude physical pendulums. And in this case, the system is a rod with weights on both ends. 
but this weight is in a little bit, so it goes really slow. So drag is not an issue uh, with that one. So and there's a lot of great things in the lab. So I did include that in my references along with uh, Hyperphysics webpage, which um, had some good information in a, a short uh, length, and then some great articles in the Physics Teacher uh, Journal. And then this article also had a, a, a lot of uh, interesting things. If you're interested in exploring this, I can think of all kinds of things to uh, carry on with this, and hopefully you will too. If you have any questions or comments, again, you can email me. You can put them here where my video is, or join us in the discussion for uh, this section of the summer meeting. Hope you have a good meeting, and uh, hopefully I'll run into you there. Bye.